All right, let's talk runner length, guys. Jake here again from Bain Racing. There's two main areas that you need to focus on when designing an optimal intake uh, runner length or what we call an induction length and that is the sound the frequency side of things so the Hemholt resonator which most of the successful engines around the world target the third harmonic and the next point obviously being an inertia velocity and we need to create enough uh, weight enough force uh, through that column of air to keep filling the cylinder after bottom dead center because remember the intake valve is open after bottom dead center 20 30 40 50 degrees so we need to create enough inertia enough weight enough speed to keep filling that cylinder as the cylinder volume is reducing and the pressure is rising and the optimal point is right before the air stalls we want to shut that valve and this has a two-part effect. Not only is it optimizing the molecular density in the cylinder uh, and supporting the, uh, a really strong VE curve, but it's also reducing the recoil mechanism. In other words, if we had a lot of velocity, like on a, a factory engine with an overly long runner, not only are we getting uh, thinning of the air and a velocity choke, but as the air banks on the back of that closed valve, it recalls up the runner, causing a, a rare fraction of the air. And this just basically means a thinning of the air, so a less dense zone. And this is also applies with our harmonic element. As you can see by the video, when sound travels through particles, it vibrates the media and creates these dense zones. So when we target the third harmonic, what we're doing is calculating the delivery of this dense zone to land at the valve and go into the cylinder right before it closes. This will boost our performance. But here's the trick. If we look at these runners here, we've got all off the same engine, one at 9,000 and two at 7,500. The two at 7,500 are slightly different. That's because one is wet and one is dry and sound is affected by the density and elasticity of the material it's flowing through. So for steel, it will be 16,000 feet per second. For fluids, four to 5,000 and for air, around 1,100 feet per second. And then on top of that, we obviously have density and uh, elevation shifts, which will change the speed of sound. Not dramatically, but uh, it will also affect it. Here's a great demonstration, John Carsey nearly losing his finger in an intake manifold, just showing the savage nature of these uh, basically bi-directional waves, these pressure waves. And we need to remember that the intake valve opening, closing, even at 8,000, I think it's like uh, seven one thousandths of a second um, that that pressure wave is going to accelerate up to 690 feet and back down to zero so there's a hell of a lot happening and this is why we've got to be very careful with flow data off the flow bench in steady state flow uh, and they really can lead you up the garden path sometimes anyway hope this helps guys cheers